Kastuba Das here with a big announcement for Wisdom of the Sages listeners. This August will be Ashram Month at the Super Soul Farm. Simple ashram living, rising early, morning kirtan, yoga and pranayama, healthy vegan and vegetarian meals, farm seva and being immersed in nature, and then gathering in the evenings for kirtan and readings. Plus, each week we'll have a lead presenter teaching a different facet of the philosophy and lifestyle of bhakti yoga. Week number one will be the exceptional Bhakti Lata, teaching a course called The Beauty of Bhakti, bringing the culture of love and devotion into our lives. Week number two is my brother from another mother, Raghunath, teaching Falling in Love with Divinity, the Bhakti Yogi's method for opening the heart. And week number three is myself, with a course called Following the Path, examining the history and teachings of Bhakti Yoga. You can come for one, two, or all three weeks, and the pricing is by donation. For more dates and information, go to wisdomthesages.com slash events. Peace. Hey, Raghunath. Tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kastuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga, wisdom, and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right. Let's get it on. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. from Super Soul Farm. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. What day is it today? Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Everybody. It's Tuesday <laughs> study of the Bhagavatam. It's like the old days. Mara comes over for uh, the morning program. The mushroom drink. A mushroom that was like years ago, wasn't it? It was pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. She was shuffling in with her, her mushroom drink. Big thing of fresh squeezed juice. <sighs> How are you, Prabhu? Doing pretty good, Raghu. Beautiful day. Yeah. I might be going to Costa Rica. Okay. Is it yeah. work or Gopal Krishna Das to visit Gopal Krishna Das. Okay. Not really to visit him, but maybe I'll see him. Dental work. Yes, cause what is what do they call that? Oh, uh, tourism, something medical medical, tourism or something. Medical tourism. I'm going for medical tourism. (laughs) Okay, because they do crowns. Okay, uh, Raghunath, this is a squirrel. You're just like (laughs) you're maybe going to Costa Rica. Okay. Yeah, I need new. Yeah, I need crowns. I've got a really good guy. I've got all my crowns done there. Okay. Just fly in, get them done, fly out. Costa Rica, we love it. Okay. Don't miss the show. Don't miss the show. Yes. Dental tourism, Greg DeGacy says. Okay. We have announcements merit this morning. Yes, we do. All right. So we have back to recovery group meetings today. The men meet at 11 and the women meet at 2. Okay. And Madhu is offering a workshop this evening at 7 p.m. for our Patreon members on balancing your career and spirituality. And there's still space available for, or there's a couple of spaces that opened up for the Wisdom of the Sages retreat in Italy. In Italy, we kicked some people oh. out. Oh, Sorry, yeah. not qualified. You got to go. That's big news because that's going to be happening. It's happening. We got a crew. Want to go to Italy? We're second thinking about it. Didn't pull the trigger. Got sold out. Here's your chance. A couple of spaces okay. opened up. How do they contact who? Wisdomofthesages.com slash events. Wisdomofthesages.com slash events. Mm-hmm. You know what else we should mention? That, that we will have a table set up, the Wisdom of the Sages table. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, New we York did it. New York Rathiatra. We're going to have a Wisdom of the Sages. We're working on a recovery group. Table. Table, too. Yeah. Bhakti recovery group table. But uh, but we want everybody from the show to come hang out with us at 
Um, if you're not already signed up for the retreat that we're doing at the Bhakti Center, come down, hang out with us at the table. Do the parade. Show your presence. Maybe we can do it. We should get our own cart. Was the sage cart? <laughs> no, that's <okay>. Gary Kostuba. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but we'll have a table. We have our like our our logo, our banner kind of thing, tablecloth kind of, just so you can recognize us. Yeah, and table. Uh, that's June eleventh, Saturday, June eleventh in Washington Square Park. We'll be there all afternoon. Maybe we should have some kirtan at our table. Yeah, why not? Or Q and A, or Q and A yeah. day. Yeah, we may be at the Q and A booth. It, it, we'll see, but our table will be set up somewhere in that. In the Mara just said she's not going to even be there. What's with that? I don't know. Mara, got an excuse? <laughs> I had a couple of events to cater that day. She's got, she's got what they call work. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's got some events. I mean, when you're a caterer during the summer, you miss out on all the, the action. I do. It's true. She does. <laughs> she goes to other people's events. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Okay. We're going to miss you. We're going to miss We're you. Miss you. Oh, I'm gonna miss you. Shall we talk nugget? What's that? Shall we talk nuggets now? Get into the nugget. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's our nugget for today on Greek Week. Oh, it's Greek this week one's today. from... Yes? Democratus. <laughs> I think you got that right. right? How, how you pronounce it? Democratus. I assume it's Democritus. Democritus? Yeah, Democritus. Democritus. <laughs> Democritus. <laughs> Democratus. I've never heard of him. Well, I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if the word democracy came from him, but um, I don't know that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Okay, here he says, what happiness he say? resides not in possessions, hmm. All right. and not in gold. <laughs> happiness dwells in the soul. Okay. Culturally appropriated from India. <laughs> <laughs> there you go again. Okay. These Greeks. <laughs> These Greeks steal it all. Happiness resides not in possessions, not in gold. Happiness dwells in the soul. Speak That's sort of like... It. I don't know. Let's just... No, this is tremendously profound, Rogonath. This... Don't you? You're all <laughs> underwhelmed by it. This is like this is a life-changing idea. I mean, you can say it, but you have to you deeply embrace it. You know, run with this, Rogonath. This is okay. important. I'm going to run with this. When you read this thing, sounds super, super obvious. Sounds like, duh. It's like anyone who's anything in spiritual circles will get this. But you know, we were talking. Who was I talking to yesterday? We we're talking about how the material world. I was talking about Gopal Chandra, you know what I mean? It's like uh, uh, the material world has a way mm-hmm. of ripping everything out of your hands, mm-hmm. everything out of your life. And to make you realize there's nothing to take shelter of except Krishna. You see, the material world actually works for Krishna, is employed by Krishna. When we say the material world, we're talking about Durga Devi and her job is to get, make nature very beautiful and also to to uh how do you say steer us in a particular direction train steer, us steer us educate us educate us. educate us in that this world actually isn't yours mm-hmm. all the things in this world that we love aren't ours to possess oh, and if you don't get it. that right. if you don't get that in a sweet way, in a, in a way where you're soft, where you bend, then you snap when everything starts to get <laughs> stripped out of your hands. Mm? I, very nice realizations, right? Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, well, it's a fact. In, in one sense, you know, people can say this kind of stuff. And even, you know, the common person will, you know, will say something like this, right? You know what? It's, it's really a, it, it's, it's none, none of these things really make us happy. But the fact is we still keep chasing these things, right? Yeah. As if happiness dwelled within them. It's, you know, even just think about the language. Happiness resides not in possessions, not in gold. There's no happiness in there that you need to taste, right? Mm. There's, there's, no, there's nothing there that, that actually satisfies the soul. Happiness dwells within the soul. Therefore, and this is where it becomes life-changing, one has to shift their entire strategy if they want to be happy. Right. Mm. It means if you actually get this, in other words, it has to go from the platform of Jnana or knowledge to the platform of Mara. She caught her staring at the space. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, 
Uh. <laughs> okay, how about you, Rago? From the platform of Guiana to the platform of? Bakhti. No, oh, man, you're the... I was calling me staring at the space. <laughs> staring at the space. I was going to say, I mean, you could say that for sure, but to the platform of Vigiana, right? To, from, from like oh, just yeah, theoretical yeah. knowledge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, from the yes, Vigiana. <laughs> from, <the> yes. <laughs> from the platform of, of just mere external knowledge, right? Book knowledge, you could say, to the platform of realized knowledge to experience, to actual wisdom. Right, that that this is not just something that I know and I speak about theoretically, but it's something that I understand so deeply that it begins to govern how I live my life. You know, and I stop chasing the external things for happiness, and I base my, you know, from the minute that I wake up in the morning to the minute that yeah. I go to sleep at night, this that this realization is is deeply ingrained in my mind and all my activities that that they're geared towards uncovering the happiness within, rather than searching for happiness without. That'll flip the switch. Mm. You know, there's so many even yeah. subtle things that even if we're thinking, well, no, I, I know gold won't make me happy. I know stuff won't make me happy. But it's so deeply rooted. Mm. Home, family, children. These are mine. This is where I find security. And so, you know, I was getting this special blessing blessing pain the pain dr pain we call him dr pain came to give me a visit when i got back from columbia who's i dr. probably told pain? you this privately who's dr pain yeah dr P dr pain came to give me a visit you know i came home from columbia oh i see what you're saying okay you know what i mean oh you get it i thought it was like some kind of chiropractor came over or something. yeah he came over just adjust <laughs> me now i'm completely krishna conscious and dr, dr. Pain, pain came and um it was like you know i mentioned on the show i'm going through a divorce but you know, it, you really went. Well, my, it, well, I came back. Thing. I went through it. My wife moved out of the house and yeah. I didn't know it. I, she didn't tell me she was moving out and the kids weren't there and the dog wasn't there. And like pictures were off the wall and the couch was missing. And I came back to the whole farm and I was like, I suffered so much anxiety mm. and loss and pain and the, it was like, OK, Bhagavatam, it's time to call on my Bhagavatam gods to come help me out, my Bhagavatam angels. And, you know, you don't realize how like, well, big deal. You knew you were getting a divorce. You knew that, you know, there was going to have to be custody now. You knew you're going to go through this, you know, weird transition. But it hit me like a sledgehammer on my head and I broke down like I really broke down. I went through a series of. Uh, which I've never had intense type of like anxiety attacks. And it, in retrospect, I'm seeing it all as like, wow, Dr. what a blessing. What Dr. a blessing. Payne. Dr. Payne came. Dr. K Payne came and started doing the healing, which is none of this stuff is yours. None of this stuff is yours. Don't get too attached. Get ready. This is what the material world is. It's a world where you fall in love with things that get pulled out of your hand. They're not your shelter. You have one shelter and it, it, this is the ongoing prodding I'm getting through Bhakti, through the information that we're reading every day. But, and this is the stuff that's going to save our life at the time of death. It's going to be, oh, of course, this is what I've been hearing. Oh, Krishna. And then we break into some prayer like King Preeti is praying like we're reading. Hmm. You know, comfort, comfort in the material world. It's problematic. Hmm. Good uh -huh. is bad. Is it bad? Oh, then it's, <laughs> then it's <laughs> good. If it's going good, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> I say that every day. <laughs> How's it going? Good? Yeah. Bad. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Sorry about <It's>... that. <laughs> All right. Dr. Payne came. We're Dr. Payne Dr. from <laughs> Bayonne, New Jersey. Dr. Payne. You like that, Dr. Payne? Yeah. Thank you, Ragnar. You're welcome. I need Dr. Rest today. <laughs> okay. So that's our nugget. I thought that was, that was good. Democra Democritus. Democritus. Want to get on with the show? Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Narayanam namaskutya naram chayva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam madiriyat. Before citing the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayana. Unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, 
and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prayeshva badreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome in the heart will become eradicated and loving service to the Supreme Lord who has praised the transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Gyana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksurun Medutam Yena Tazmai Sri Gudaveda Maha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes to the torchlight of knowledge I offer my obeisances at their lotus-like feet. Okay. You set yourself up there? <laughs> Maybe if you did this before the show, we're <laughs> gonna... No, I'm, I'm, I'm squirreling out right here. Okay. Um, because we were thinking, like, we offer obeisances to Mother Saraswati, so it's good to have a mental picture uh-huh. of what Saraswati looks like, right? Yeah. She's uh-huh. the goddess of learning. We offer obeisances. Just like if I say, uh, yeah, Kastuba's a great guy. Mara says, yeah, Kastuba is a great guy, but we can't picture, picture. who Kastuba is. Yeah. This is all about visuals. This is a personal spiritual path. So Saraswati... She wears a white sari, right? Symbolizes purity. What is she carrying in her arms? What does she have? Wait a second. Her <laughs> sari has a blue border. Oh. She's usually depicted as graceful youth with white skin, whitish skin. Um, she's not being concerned with worldly goods either. She rarely wears jewelry, right? Because she's in knowledge. She may have a crescent on her forehead and may be seated on a lotus flower. And she 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 plays uh what does she play? A stringed instrument. A stringed instrument. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I mean, a, a vena, I suppose, right? Vena. I don't know if it's a vena. I think a vena is a drone. Well, it's maybe it's just, that doesn't mean she doesn't play it. L- look that up, Mara. Find out what what uh, Saraswati's playing. I thought she was playing a vena. Oh, so they celebrate the fun Holding a, oh, yeah, Avina. Avina, okay. Yeah. I stand. She's, also she's holding droning, a, book, you know? a rosary, and a water pot. She's because holding when a you're rosary. speaking all that, that vidya, you know, you're speaking all that knowledge, it's good to have the drone going in the background. Mm. Yeah, I got you. Got us Sometimes I like when we call Japa Mala's rosary. Do you like that? Or do you too, is it too Christianized? I don't have a problem with that. Our, our uh, Hindu rosary beads. But you know, like, oh, uh, that's not so weird. That's normal. Hindu rosary beads. But actually, Raghunath, this verse, Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chavan Devim Saraswatim Vyasam. So it's it's actually it's it's offering respect to the devas, right? To to the devi, Saraswati. Yeah. You can use this to support your your. Um, I mean, God worship. Yes, exactly. <laughs> your Shani worship. <laughs> right. I was I, I was I, like, I, I was joking. While we were painting the house the other day, I was like, I actually need to get a crown. <laughs> Not for any material purpose, just for like channeling the good uh, planets. Okay. I think if I did have extreme amounts of wealth, I might get a crown. <laughs> Who's that guy that walks around Chatham with a crown? <laughs> you look like Crazy Eddie or something like that. Is it crazy? Or who some other guy was wearing a crown? <laughs> King okay, King this Biden. is the last second squirrel. We're gonna. All let's right, get it. Let's all get right, it. let's get on with the show, please. Okay. My dear Lord. So what's going on? No Give us a little context. Oh, we were reading the purport because it was a good purport. Let's oh, just yeah, read the verse that. again. Remember this? Yeah, yeah. I was okay. My dear Lord, you are glorified by the selected. This is pre to talking to Lord Vishnu. Mm-hmm. My dear Lord, you are glorified by the selected verses uttered by great personalities. Such glorification of your lotus feet is just like saffron particles. When the transcendental vibration from the mouths of great devotees carries the aroma of the saffron dust of your lotus feet, the forgetful living entity gradually remembers his eternal relationship with you. Devotees thus gradually come to the right conclusion about the value of life. Ooh, that's so nice. We that's basically what we were talking about in the, uh, nugget. In the nugget. Mm-hmm. Um, devotees, um, my, dear, my Lord. dear Lord, I therefore do not need any other benediction, but the opportunity to hear from the mouth of your pure devotee. Okay. That's the benediction that he asked for, right? Let me hear from the mouth of your pure devotee. Could ask for anything. 
That's what he asked for. That has a lot to do with our nugget. Good job on that. You Good tied point. the nugget to the verse. Good point. You just did it. Well, you did it. You picked the nugget. Well, yeah, but you tied it together. Your nugget acharya. <laughs> All right, okay, let's read the comments. Your nugget let's read the first. Nugget let's read, let's read this first uh, paragraph. It is explained in the previous verse. This is the purport. Mm -hmm. That one has to hear glorification of the Lord from the mouth of a pure devotee. This is further explained here. The transcendental vibration from the mouth of a pure devotee is so powerful that it can revive the living entity's memory of his eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. It's I was just, just like hearing this stuff. It you seems know? like, well, why is this Indian music going to wake up something in me for my Italian body? It does. It does. You can't figure it out. And it's not Indian music. These are imported from the spiritual realm, these sounds. And they have some effect. Just like you put some chemical on copper and it turns it blue. Or you put some chemical, right, to, to, to clean, you know, you put tamarind on copper and it turns it bright and shiny. It gets rid of all the, 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 the deterioration of the copper. So it's the same thing. It's just something about this sound. There's other sounds we can put on the soul that screw up the soul, that cover the soul. Sounds of gossip and resentment, of anger, of finding fault, of criticism. They cover the soul. They don't connect us with other people. They don't connect us with source. But then there's, then there's other sounds that are positive, that make us feel good. I don't know why. It, if you like break it down, it's just a vibration. But these vibrations affect the consciousness. Then there's transcendental sounds. Golokera Premadana Harinama Sankirtana. Mm. Right? The Sankirtan is imported directly from the spiritual realm. <laughs> okay. Hmm? Did you ever have a moment in your life where there was a devotee speaking and then it just I want I want to ask you this, Raghunath. Was there a moment in your life, a moment in your life, where you just said, Okay, this is it? I'm I'm going to dedicate myself, you know, or you know was, what, it, you know what, you I'm not going to pull one of these like, OK, well, I because I I'm not going to pull one of these. No. I mean, I get it. I get it. Yeah. But I don't believe in that so much. At well, least I in did. My life. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, <laughs> yes. It, I believe that it can happen. Like, yes, I hear that makes so much sense. I'm in. Yeah. But for me, it's always faith has been in small increments like, OK, that makes sense. I'm going to step one step further. Well, for me, you it was I mean? both. In other words, I was reading these books for some quite some time, and it was clicking, and I was like, yes, okay, I agree with that. That makes perfect sense, ringing true. But then I sat in front of a, a very advanced devotee, and he spoke, and I said, okay, that's it. Like, in other words, I've got to commit now. It woke me up, you know? Yeah. Back then, the commitment was much more, there was much more of a line in the sand. You know, we, we were like, we, well, commit means was, we're joining the temple. No, but gonna, I didn't I didn't join the temple. I didn't commit in that sense. I committed, committed to saying, in your heart. I committed my heart saying, OK, this is the path I'm going to follow in, in my life. And, and I in, a, in an immediate it had an immediate effect on like my habits and my practices and so on. OK, like I said, OK, I'm it wasn't in other words, I went from this is a very intriguing, interesting ideas that these people have to like, that's it. I'm, I'm sold out. I'm into it. I'm following it. Yeah, I mean, there were there were times where like hearing truth was sort of like, uh, you know, it's sort of like a pinata, you know, <laughs> I'm going to try this analogy, see if it works. Okay. You know, you, you get a couple kids going ahead of you. You know what a pinata is? A big paper machine <laughs> okay. thing is filled with candy. A couple kids going ahead of you. They're just hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. And then you come along. It's already damaged it. Right. And you just mm -hmm. whack it and all the sweet stuff comes out. So it's sort of like. People were shooting truth nuggets at me, uh, a truth pin. They were hitting me, hitting me with truth. And it was like you're getting weaker. <clears throat> I was deflecting it. <laughs> I was like dodging it. I wasn't ready to hear it. I was too attached to something material. <clears throat> and then at a ripe time, the, the incredibly grateful for the, the conversation. It was the con you're right. There was mm -hmm. a time dialogue. There was, was a like, moment. It was a moment. There was oh, a moment. And I was like, okay, you see, we're getting. Yes. Somewhere. And we what will never uh, none of us will ever forget that moment. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I remember where I was, the questions I asked where I just said it was like 
it was like being trapped in a burning house. <laughs> okay. And someone just came in and saved your saved your butt. I just see. picked you up, picked you up, yeah. cradled you, and we're getting out of here, kid. Right. It was like that. Okay, so the, read this. I think it's it's gonna go into this 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 commentary here a bit more. Where are we? I don't know. It's, we just start the purport over again. We didn't get deep into. Let's explain in the previous verse. Yeah. Uh, that one. In our material, here. this is the third line. In our material existence, under the influence of illusory Maya, we have almost forgotten our eternal relationship with the Lord. Exactly like a man sleeping very deeply, who forgets his duties. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the Vedas, it is said that every one of us is sleeping under the influence of Maya. We must get up from this slumber and engage in the right service. For thus, we can properly utilize the facility of this human form of life. I mean, come on. Everyone's felt at some time or the other, like, I'm wasting my life. This is me. Like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> Ever get that? You're like in the middle of work. You're like, what am I doing with my life? It's true. Even when we practice bhakti, there's times of there's seasons in our bhakti uh, life where we feel like mm, I've taken a wrong turn here. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing with my life? So this is good. So this is speaking. It's not just like once you've opted in, you're in. You've got to opt in to your spiritual life every moment of the day forever <laughs> okay. until all we want it until it's not even an option until right until it's not even an option. It's just like, that's all I want. That's all I want. You don't even have to give me a choice because I'm just choosing north. OK, so we must get up and slumber and engage for this as, as expressed, expressed in a song. This is a wonderful song, right? Mm -hmm. By Bhakti, by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Bhakti Vinod. Thakur Bhakti Vinod. It sounds I like how they just switch the names. Sound, Bhakti Vinod yeah. Thakur. Thakur Bhakti Vinod. If you, you can Thakur. call me Kapi, Kapo Raghunath. As Kapo <laughs> Raghunath is on the show today, Lord Chaitanya, also known as Chaitanya Lord, says, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago. The Lord asked every sleeping soul, every living entity to get up and engage in bhakti, in devotional service, so that his mission in this human form of life may be fulfilled. Do what you're meant to do, people. This is all we're asking. It'll actually make you happy. It'll actually fulfill you. Just like if I have a skateboard, but I'm using it as a, uh, a table. Well, that's not bad. It is a table. It can be used as a table, right? But why not use it to, then you see someone like doing tricks on a skateboard. You're like, oh, it can be used like that. You can do a, can't grind a twist, a McTwist, <laughs> a McTwist. I can't remember. I used to skateboard. I can't remember anything. A front side air. You can do that with a skateboard. Why not use it for that? There's so much potential that we have. And this is what Lord Chaitanya is ordering. And it's not just material potential, because a lot of us have a lot of material potential, too. But trust me, on this one, you can exhaust your material potential and feel completely broken depressed and sad because we're not material beings. We're spiritual beings who wants to be completely like I'm completely uh, I, I've lived up my, to my m m material potential, but I'm still frustrated. I'm still angry. I'm still resentful. I still feel empty. I meet people like this all the time because people like this go to India. They're like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> right. I'm successful. I've done it all. I climbed the corporate ladder. I, you know, I, you know, I went to the, the best university and, and why, why, why do I even, I don't even want to be here. People like a lot of times people do teacher trainings for that too. They're, they're looking, they're looking for what the Bhagavatam offer. They're looking for what Lord Chaitanya has to offer. It's not like it's bad to live your potential, but if you're, suppose you're an incredible athlete and you're just like an incredible runner but you're running in the wrong direction. Like everyone says, go, and you just go the wrong way. That's a good analogy, Castillo. Come on, give like me it. something for that. No, that's good. You're running really great. You're the fastest in the wrong direction. Kind of like the ladder one. Yeah, that too is a spinoff of the ladder <laughs> one. Going really fast, or how about this one? You're, you're, you're flying. Me, me and Mary are flying down the car. I know they're in your new car. 
And she goes, hey, man, you missed the exit. I was like, it's okay. I'm going fast. I'll just go faster. doesn't matter how fast I'm going. I missed the exit. We have to stop. As a matter of fact, you're better off going slower. Ah? We have to better stop. Better slower at that pull. point. Yeah? We have to st- <laughs> I thought you were asking me what I said. <laughs> no, I'm just quacking. We have to stop, pull over, and check the map. We got to check the map, make sure we didn't miss the exit, make sure we are going the right way, or else what good is our, uh, our, our peak perfection athleticism, right? What good is it our living that so-called potential? It's a material potential. We have a spiritual potential. That's what we have to live up to. Well, I, I'm not saying you have to. You don't have to. You could use a skateboard as a table. It's just a waste of our real potential. We're spiritual beings, and we forgot. Lord Chaitanya is saying, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gora Chandra Bole. Lord Chaitanya is calling, wake up. Wake up, sleeping souls. Wake up. Is that Thank okay? you. I think is you just that, woke is, up. Is that like, yeah. okay? Wait, uh, uh, is there a subtitle with that okay? Like, okay, shut up. No, no. I think you just woke <laughs> us all up. <laughs> I am your human alarm clock. It says, the last, the li- last line of this paragraph says, this awakening voice comes through the mouth of a pure devotee. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's hear yeah. from him. All right. Yeah. Let's continue. Yeah. Okay. This is a good one. By the way, for those who have never lived in an ashram, Kostub and I will attest that Jeev Jago is, can also be used in a shaming way. <laughs> okay. Jeev Jago <laughs> literally means Jeev means the soul and Jago means wake up. So it can. So if you were sleeping. And not waking up for the morning, early morning in the ashram, there was always some older brahmachari walking around with the gong going, Jeev Jago Prabhu, Jeev Jago, <laughs> wake up. <laughs> Do you remember when we were young, there used to be like six brahmacharis, uh, Krishna Seva. They would just like dance around from room to room in oh, the Krishna Brooklyn Seva temple. Krishna was incredible, wasn't he? He, he was one. Was he Nigerian? He was African. I don't know where he's from. He had a and beautiful, he had a, he had a, a very he had a French raspy voice. accent, but he had a incredibly raspy yeah. voice. But, but he would like, walk around, and they'd have a little kirtan that would come to each room to wake everybody up. <laughs> he was oh boy, what we got to get in touch with him. Let's find him. I think he was in the Atlanta area. The last I heard, there were some good devotees back then. Oh, when you were young and looking up at the older devotees, it was so beautiful. I, I always remember this, too. I remember because, you know, that in the Brooklyn Temple, when you went up to the Brahmacharya Ashram, it was kind of like uh, these smaller rooms all around, kind of like a big open kind of. There was area. a big open area and then yeah. smaller bedrooms. And so if, the, if yeah. you had no room, you don't know, mean apartment, they used to call us. If you had no place to sleep, you would just sleep in that hallway. We called it the master bedroom. OK, well, that's where Krishna Seva slept. You know, in other words, he was a person that lived there in that temple. He was, you know, a, a senior and important person there, but he just slept. He would just roll, roll, you know, roll over in, in a corner of that just open area where people are walking through it all the time. We have zero privacy. There's no. Pri- yeah, it's, it's equivalent like sleeping on the floor of your living room. And there's all these other bedrooms up there. So everybody else and, and all kinds of people live there. Like, it's not just your yeah. family, but it's like, you know, like, you know, like people walking 40 through people strangers walking through. And I remember, always, I love that ashram. I remember with, I was with my guru once and we were walking through that area and there was Krishna Seva, you know, just sleeping there, just <laughs> on the floor. I don't remember what my guru said, but I remember he looked at him and he said something so admired, just, just like, you know, just like, look how simple this person is, you know, just. That's a person that gets our nugget, right? That happiness is not going to come from not only gold, or but you like zero possessions, right? Like, I don't even need my own room. No, because you can't need- like, if you're sleeping in the master bedroom there on that living room, that floor in the ashram, you guys, yeah. it's like a, it's a very sterile looking place too. It's like yeah, a there's hospital. no windows or anything. Not, like, there's a big empty room with nothing yeah. in it. And you can't just leave your bedding out. You have to, as soon as you go to bed, you got, or as soon as you wake up, you got to roll that up. You got to wash the floor out. You got to put your stuff back in a crate. It was like real renunciation. You can't, couldn't be attached to, you, hey, this is my place. There was no place. Yeah. You had no place. Yeah. How about the, I, I remember the day I went to the Boston Temple to visit and okay. I opened the closet to hang there? up my coat. Rob and Roy's Rob in Roy there. is in the closet. <laughs> Rob Roy lived in the closet. He had a tiny little it closet was, he lived in. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's like, oh, he was chanting in the closet. He had his little bed laid out the in the closet. closet. Was, he's got a whole setup in there, too. Up for his body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have great memories of Ram Roy, too. But you know that that's how that this is this is a this is someone that's living that life right for real. Now it, you don't have to necessarily live in a closet or live in like an open area, and, you know. But 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 this is proof that happiness is not coming from possessions. That one can be completely happy and alive and bright. You know, Krishna Seva when he's walking around, that guy's just like just a beam of of happiness. You know. Yeah, he was a beam of happiness. What a sweet sweet guy. Vishnu Ratna, remember him? Vishnu Ratna. Vishnu Ratna. Vishnu Ratna, I loved him. Yeah, Merle I ran into Krishna. him like early uh, Krishna. A years ago. I loved all these people. Yeah, yeah. They're all my heroes when I moved into the temple. You're probably going to see them in New York Rat Theater on June yes. 11th in New York City. Oh, my God. You know, it was so attractive as a new devotee going into that Brooklyn temple. It's just like it was like it was like walking into the spiritual world. <laughs> once, once you bought into it, right? It took you a yeah. while to get. Yeah, yeah, it took me a while. It was years of like, who are these weirdos? And then I was like, <laughs> I'm in. I love these people. I want to be like them. The kirtans were just so good oh, back then. Man, the Sunday Sunday kirtans there, the Sunday feasts. Oh my! When you had God. all that, the whole I always remember, you know, Vrikeshwar Pundit and his whole crew leading kirtan. And my God, it was like power. And, and I was with with all those guys, right, with Harley and all those guys, you know, like and everybody getting into it, dancing, and, and, and you know, in the summertime, and and it was just like total total outlet. Mm. And then you sit down on that floor. And then uh, Lochan and Under would sing the prayer to Lord and Shringadev, and that was just like a whole nother mood, right? That was just like, just beautiful, <laughs> like heavenly, beautiful. you know? I have so many fond memories. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. You know what it is? Yeah. And some of you are experiencing it right now, if you're new to this. This is romancing Krishna. You want romance in your life? You're thinking, oh, I need some romance. This is the real romance. Other romance is not going to hold up to it. You're going to it's going to get old. You're going to be like, oh, we need to stoke the fire like it was when we first met. <laughs> It'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> you got to romance Krishna. He's your lover. He's your real lover. Come on. Not We've shiny. been through this. <laughs> OK. All right. Baba. So let's uh, let's move on to the next verse. Text 26. Okay, that was a fun little memory. Yeah, a little walk down Brooklyn Maryland, Temple. Brooklyn Temple. Brooklyn Temple, early 90s, it was happening. <laughs> it was a fun memory. <laughs> Text 26. Text 26. My dear, highly glorified Lord, if one in the association of pure devotees hears even once the glories of your activities, he does not unless he is nothing but an animal. Give up the association of devotees for no intelligent person would be so careless as to leave their association. Oh, so important. Oh, this one. Oh, man. Keep keep going. You haven't right. finished the I'm one. having a moment. <laughs> right. I'm having a moment, my yeah. friend. I'm not spaced out on? right now. OK, I know. I know there's like. Your moment is related to the verse. on Zoom like, just come on, let's get on with this. But I, I'm allowed to have a moment too. I'm no. a real person. <laughs> okay, you're a person. I believe you. What tell us about your moment? What are you experiencing at this moment? Are you trying? Are you trying to force the clam to open up to get the pearl? I'm, I'm trying to not force. I'm trying to, to, to you gotta gently, stroke the clam. I'm gently stroking the clam. Stroke the clam. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on, Clam. I'm just going to read this again. My right. dear, my dear, highly glorified Lord, if one in the association of pure devotees hears even once the glories of your activities, he does not, unless he is nothing but an animal, give up the association of devotees for no intelligent person would be so careless as to leave their association. We're going to come up with so many reasons, right? The perfection of chanting and hearing about your glories was accepted even be by the goddess of fortune who desired to hear of your unlimited activities and transcendental glories. Hmm. Can I tell you a beautiful story? Yeah, is it related to your moment? Yes, it's my, okay. it's my moment, man. Let's hear about it. Uh, it's, it's quite embarrassing. It, as uh, long as it's not gonna be the Calcutta Book Fair story. <laughs> no, it's not that embarrassing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Things I can't share on the podcast, 
But this was like an embarrassing moment where I just, I had a very low time, a very low time in my spiritual life. Mm. And I really struggled. And I, I really struggled and uh, couldn't, did, couldn't, didn't follow principles. And then I just sort of like, I just needed to like find myself separate from being a devotee of Krishna. Which is another way of saying being a total Maya. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to find Maya. myself. <laughs> and it was, was before it. I was, it was before I was married and I was in a relationship that was not any good for me at all. It was not going anywhere. If anywhere, it was, it was not good for my consciousness. Okay. And it was really, really sad. And, um, I, and I didn't, I, I was doing the uh, shelter, but I, not really that much. And to make a long story short, I, I had, uh, I had to go collect, get some money from Tukaram, Tukaram Prabhu, who's been on oh, our show. Yeah. I had to go there and uh, introduce him to Swami. Told me, you know, go get some money from Tukaram. He'll pay you some money. And uh, so I was like, well, who's Tukaram? He's like, you don't know Tukaram? I was like, no, I don't know him. He goes, well, he's a jujitsu guy like you. And back then, nobody was a jujitsu guy. So I called up to Karami, invited me down. And I tell you. He's not shy, Tukaram. Tukaram's not shy. And I tell you, and not only is he not shy, he's incredibly intense. Aggressive. Incredibly intense, <laughs> aggressive, abrupt, <laughs> terse, can like crack you open like a hazelnut. And um, I tell you, but he's in but he's such a wonderful person too. He really loves people. Mm. I've never experienced a love. It and so, um, Tukram, he just sat me down one night where I was that at the. So you were just the going there to pick up I was some to, money. I was there to pick up some money that was owed to me from some gig I did. Um, you know, uh, uh, while I was on tour. And so, um, Tukram sat me down and he just said, "Hey, so what's up with your spiritual life?" And I, like I said, I was in a really bad place. And I said, "You know." I don't know. I, 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 he said, well, do you believe Krishna is God? I was like, yeah, of course I do. But I, I can't call myself. A... You know, truthfully, <laughs> it's so even painful to even say this. But it just happens. I, I couldn't. I just said I can't call myself a devotee. <laughs> and uh this is the beauty of devotees. He said, what do you mean you can't call yourself a devotee? I said, I just, I don't know. I've just drifted so far away from devotees. And uh, he said, well, he said, well, do you believe Krishna is God? I was like, yeah, of course I believe Krishna is God. And uh, he said, but you don't follow the principles of, you know, the regular principles. And I said, no, I don't. He said, so why is why are you not a devotee because of that? He goes, you're just a, you're just a devotee who's 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 struggling in the material world. Don't he goes, what I see in you is you have integrity and you don't want to call yourself a devotee because you're not living up to the principles of a devotee. But he's like, of course, you're a devotee. You got to reframe how you how you're looking at yourself. You're a devotee. You're just struggling with your senses and with your mind. He goes, and he goes, and you've done so much service. Of course, Krishna will reclaim you. And he's like, you're, and he goes, you never come to this temple. You don't live that far. You're always welcome to come here. You can stay here any night you want to. You just come down here. We'll take care of you. We'll feed you. You know, you can just come as much. You don't even have to come to the morning program. You just come. You can walk on the beach. You can come visit and see the deities. But don't think of yourself as not a devotee. How could you, how could you, you, you don't have to say that. And it was just one of those beautiful moments mm. in devotional service where you just get, you've been in your head and you've been living in your head for so long. And then a devotee just sort of like embraces you and just sort of like gets that train back on the track. And it was just a sweet thing. And Tukaram, as tough as he is and as rough as he is, and some people you can't take that <laughs> toughness and roughness, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just like sometimes to, to get to <laughs> the uh, mayor, that's your mayor. <laughs> 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 that look in your face. He's roughed up mayor a little bit. 
sometimes to get to that sweet, you know, to, to get to that sweet, right? To, sometimes to get to that goodies out of the pinata, you got to whack it a couple it's times. The, the sweet Tootsie Roll center, it's you have sweet. to go through the hard outer shell. Yes. So, um, but Tukaram just was all sweet that day. And he was just so, it was so sweetly loving. And uh, because of that, I'm always in debt to him. You know, wow. we, can't, we can't never forget the devotees who have like, just like you said, when was that first day that you heard from a devotee and mm -hmm. they put you on your spiritual path? I'll never forget that, you know, the, all the devotees. It's so amazing anyway, from the two different perspectives, you know, like in your own perspective, which it seems like it was, you know, like there was maybe guilt there or shame, you know, um, thinking I'm not a devotee. But from his perspective, it's like, what are you talking about? It, we're all going through these ups and downs. We're all, you know, it's just, you know, but that has nothing to do. You know, and, and, and you know, and, and that point is so deep and so important because um, we, the, the way that we judge ourselves, you know, the, the, you know, I shared this, I forget when it was a few weeks ago or something like that, but we we're talking about that I was standing with Radha Swami once and a, and, and a friend of ours came up and just was like crying. Remember I was telling you that? Mm. And she was just saying, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. You know, it's it's like everyone else, it seems like to be vegetarian is so easy, but I keep slipping from it. And, right. You know, and, and and you could see that in her mind, it was just like, it, 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 was, it was just, um, she just felt like I have no connection, you know. Now, of course she does, you know. And and then I remember just afterward, Ron was telling me, saying, like, Who, who's really advanced here? You know, the person that that follows all the rules. It's not meaning that the rules aren't important, you know, like the regulations and the, um, the stipulations. It's all, that's all brilliant guidance in life. Right. But the fact it's that only we just fall short of it. Us. Yeah. It's only going to help us. It's just yeah. like saying, this is how you drive 55. Don't go 95. It gets a little crazy. Yeah. You know, don't go 10 miles per hour on the highway. It's just <laughs> right. giving us good guidelines. But the fact that you have trouble following it, uh, the fact that one struggles with following it, it, it it's it's actually better. It, it they're all meant for a purpose. In other words, all those rules are meant to bring you to per, to, to a particular place of consciousness. And mm. a large uh, of what a large amount of what that's all about is humility. So if one follows all these rules, but they but actually it leads to pride. Well, actually, they're much farther from 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 a deeper understanding, right? And if one has trouble following them. But but like they actually feel like you know humility because of it. They're actually much closer, and so from per, from Tukaran's perspective, he's looking and saying, "What are you talking about? You're not a devotee? How could you say you're not a devotee? Obviously, you're a devotee. The fact that in certain ways externally that's not playing out right now. Well, that's to be expected. Life is so difficult. We're all struggling in different ways. But you know, this all goes to the point where what Prabhupada said at the end of that paragraph that we just read: this awakening voice comes through the mouth of a pure devotee. Yeah, and it wakes you right out. That was yeah. a turning point for you then, huh? That was that was like a second birth for me, truthfully, that day. Hmm. That day. And, and, and it became like the beginning of me and Tukra. I was like bosom friendship, you know, yeah. like I, I love him forever for that. Well, and, and and so, like Krishna sends these people for you at right times. And, you know, he got it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it's and, actually beautiful. It's actually magical. And Krishna sends the exact right people for you at the exact right moment. Mm. And you see how like that there is like magic working behind the scenes at all times. And in, in retrospect, I in retrospect, I don't even blame those. I mean, I, I, it allows me to relinquish any like self hate because I in that time, it just it, it helped me. It, it, it was ex exactly what I needed. Mm -hmm. um, even that pain of the material world that, you know, they said that Maya covers you, the two potencies of Maya, the covering potency. And the worship. kicking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what's the Sanskrit? If you know the Sanskrit, put it on the board. Oh, yeah. There is a covering potency that Maya, it almost like puts a blanket over your head where you think, yeah, this is great. Maya's great. I don't know what these why these devotees are so uptight. Maya is actually really good. And then there's Maya's got a that's the covering potency. And then there's the kicking potency where the material world starts kicking you relentlessly. Mm. And sometimes you're just like getting beat up so bad by the material world. And you know what? 
sometimes good to get a swift kick in the patoot. <laughs> sometimes it's good. It can kick you right out of Maya sometimes. Yeah, so that was a, truthfully that even that painful time, I, it was glorious. Well, you, you know, here the, the verse again is saying that, I mean, the, the language is kind of heavy. Like Prithu is standing before Lord Vishnu. He's experiencing this ecstasy, right? He was, he was crying. He was having trouble speaking. And then he starts to speak. He has only one benediction that I want. You know, you're, you're offering me anything. All I want is to hear from your devotees, right? Because when I hear the messages coming from them, mm. it wakes me up. And then he says, so he says to give up the association of these devotees. Mm. He says only an animal would do that. Meaning it's like someone who's, whose awareness is not fully developed, you know. And then he says, for no intelligent person would be so careless. <laughs> as to leave their association. And, and, and you know, what happens is, just like you're saying, we all struggle, right? We all hit a point where things become difficult, we struggle. And, and a lot of times that struggle, we begin to, if, if there's some, whatever pride is there in us or so on, we begin to find petty things that really aren't so important and we make them real important and say, this person said that, that person is doing this. You know, we find some fault and we use that as our justification, as a rationalization to leave the association of, of, of the bhakti yogis. But it's actually, you know, and, and I've shared this before, but I, I learned this lesson from, from one devotee. I've tried to live by it. And that is never break a relationship with another devotee. Right? Never break a relationship. Mm. E, you know, even, good, even if... Good lesson. Yeah, even if... Um, even if you're not spending time with them or whatever, but don't break it because there's always a chance that it comes back together. I thought Kostuba yeah. was going to cry there for a moment. Too. <laughs> <laughs> like we're all just well, crying. Yeah. <laughs> trying to one up you. It didn't work. You think you could cry? I can cry too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it's a fact that, you know, like, and, and it, I'll tell you something, Rogan. There's been times in my life where I've been so glad that I followed that advice. Oh, good. Don't break yeah. one with me, Kostuba, please. I would not come on, Rogan. There's no question. All right. What, I, what, 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 um, <laughs> you know, there was such a, a good oh, it's seven, but I just wanted to say, you know, that, yeah. you know, it was it's just an, also a, a good example of what uh, Tukaram Prabhu uh, shared is like yeah. the example of just like giving some person some love. You know, it's a great example. Mm -hmm. Like see so your person's at encouraging where they're at, not shaming a person where they're at, but building mm -hmm. them up. And, and, and that's part of bhakti yoga is we build people up. We don't take them down. Hashtag that one lady. <laughs> we build people up. We don't take them back and we extend ourselves. We should be doing right. backflips to ex and now, now in this world of don't overextend yourself, find your parameters, put up, <laughs> end yourself, extend Go yourself out of the way, push those parameters, make sure people, uh, you, you know, you can care for people and you can feed people and you can love people and you can make them feel welcome. Uh, it's it, it's mm -hmm. in those moments you never know when you're going to extend yourself to a person and they really need it and they really need some love in their life you know and and, and, and not and not that it, there's never time for this but in other words he could have been like what's the matter with you man come on it's you, you know it could have been that message zip it up <laughs> Capo. <laughs> but, but, Capo but, it, off. but it was the other message which was like no of course you're devotee you're already here and we're here for you anytime it was what you needed to hear at that point huh? it was what exactly what i needed to hear it's, it was game changer uh, like you said, krishna sends the the exact right people at the exact right moment look for it when it happens appreciate it and and and, and then you pray with sincerity like like uh Prithu is right here you know with gratitude yeah thank you raghunath thank you prabhu Whoosh. i we laughed we cried we <laughs> rolled down a hill in the no, grass <laughs> That was an intense backup time for us. Yeah, that was intense. <laughs> we put whipped cream on Chandler's nose. We laughed more. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Call on Bhagavatam during times of pain. Yep. You only have one shelter. Yeah. Comfort in the material world is bad. What? Comfort in the material world is bad. Good is bad. Bad is good. Yep. Bad is good. Good is bad. Sounds can cover our soul or connect us. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Opt into your spiritual life every moment of the day. Okay. Yep. Don't worry about. You know, there's one of the time those opt-in boxes where you click one and it clicks them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Go for that. 
Don't worry about your material potential. Fulfill your spiritual potential. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. That's big. That's big. Yeah. Pull over and check the map. Check it. Check it. Build people up. Don't take them down. Mm, yep. Dr. Payne reminds us that none of this is ours. Dr. Payne? Romance Krishna. Yes, I like that one. That's a t-shirt. I'd wear that. with people. Even little baby Krishna? Yeah, romance him. <laughs> Weird. He can handle baby. it. How <laughs> about just love little baby Krishna? <laughs> okay. Cradle baby Krishna. <laughs> And stroke the clan. Oh, man, is that your last? Stroke, yeah, that's the last one. <laughs> okay. I follow all these. I follow all these Indian women on Instagram who carry their deities around <laughs> with them. <laughs> like, do you ever see those? They carry them. Of they're cradling. Well, them. in Vrindavan, they always do that, right? Like they bring, yeah, like they, 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 they live in, head, in Mumbai or something. They bring little, little baskets little on their head. Down. It's wonderful. Okay. Uh, Krishna sends you who you need. The exact person you need. At the exact exactly moment you need the them. person at the right moment. Never break a devotee relationship. There you go. Pinatas better be in here, Mara. Pinatas. No pinatas. Bhakti, where it's okay to live in a closet. <laughs> yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> the hallway. Bhakti yoga. Yeah, the religion where you can live in a closet if you like. And stroke the clam. Stroke the clam. Stroke the clam. <laughs> Sounds weird. <laughs> it sounds very weird. Right it now. sounds very. Let's not do that one. I'm not wearing that shirt anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Never stroke the clam. <laughs> oh. oh, Krishna. Oh, Krishna. Well, you weren't stroking the clam. That was the problem. You were going. You were going. Okay, I was tell us the your clam. intimate moment. No, tell I, us your I'm, intimate moment. I was, I was trying to gently stroke the clam. <laughs> oh, Krishna. Hey, want to go to Italy with Mara, me, Kostuba, Kostuba's wife, Gita Priya. Who else are we bringing? Vivi. Lots of people. It, Lots of we, great people. Has it been confirmed whether or, not, uh, whether or not... Um, I can't think of her what, name today. Speak, my friend, speak. Karuna. Where Karuna is. Karuna oh, Karuna's coming. She doesn't know it. Yeah. 